Diva, I've always had a question about kind of the governance of social movements and sort of the profound um, spontaneous nature of the protest this summer um, for the movement for Black Lives. Can you talk a little bit about this sort of like the lack of centralized leadership within the movement and how effective or, um, you know, what, what are the things that spur the movement forward or hold it back in that way of governance? Sure, the leadership question is one of my favorite ones. Um, so so um, the idea that we have of protests, particularly enormous ones like we saw this summer, being spontaneous is a little bit, it's like wrong, okay? <laughs> um, which is not to say, right, that people did not pour into the streets, right, on May 26th, the day after George Floyd was murdered um, and the video of his murder uh, by a police officer went viral uh, in Minneapolis spontaneously. People did pour into the street spontaneously, but in order to maintain and increase that level of engagement required organizing and mobilization, right? So um, what you had was a movement apparatus that had experience with mass mobilization um, from uprisings all over the country since 2014 right, but especially from the Ferguson uprising um, that took place. And so they understood how to um, increase, right, the, the, like the, uh, the number of, of um, demonstrations and protests that were going on to support the organizations and people who were already in the streets um, and also to sort of spread the methodology of how to create a protest in your town. It's estimated that 40% of American counties, that is municipalities, had um, a, a protest in defense of black lives. Um, and that's like, you know, blue counties and red counties. Um, something like 8% of people reported to the New York Times, right, in New York Times data, um, claimed to have participated in a BLM pro protest over the summer. That didn't happen spontaneously. That happened with a lot of support. Um, there were a lot of toolkits shared online for how do you do a protest in your own area? How do you keep people safe? How do you make sure that people are masked? How do you make sure um, that uh, people have access to water? How do you make sure that there are medics on hand in case people are tear gassed, right, or sprayed, right? So it requires an enormous amount of coordination. Now, the question of how do you do that coordination if you don't have centralized leadership is that the Movement for Black Lives has a federated kind of leadership, right? A, a semi-federated kind of leadership, which means that the whole, the, the, the title Movement for Black Lives is the name for an umbrella organization that includes dozens and dozens of autonomous, you know, local groups, right? Um, that run their own show where they are, right? They have their own campaigns, their own interests, right? You have Southerners on New Ground, which is an LGBTQ um, uh, multiracial organization that operates in the Southern region. You have Dream Defenders, which is based on college campuses, um, you know, in Florida. You have um, BYP 100, which is a Black youth organization based in Chicago. You have Black Lives Matter Global Network, which is over in Oakland, right? Like, so you have all of these completely autonomous organizations that work on their own stuff in their own area, but they come together at topically organized tables under the, the rubric of the movement for Black Lives, right? So you have like a media and communications table, an organizing table, a policy table, right? So representatives from these organizations come together in tables, right? Um, under the rubric of the movement for Black Lives, and then they coordinate activity based on expertise, right? And they decide on national campaigns when they're gonna have national campaigns. They decide how to distribute resources for, you know, sort of large um, actions, right, et cetera. So, um, you know, the movement takes a little, you know, it, it takes a federated uh, approach. So it gets the kind of coordinating capacity that you get from a large organization while not getting the kind of um, detriments of a large organization, which is stagnation, um, be, being slow to act, having uh, people sort of um, at the top of the organizations who can be decapitated. I think that's the the, the term of, of art in the international relations literature, right? Like basically like taken out, right? Co-opted, um, you know, arrested, right, et cetera. Whereas the movement has this idea, which is um, a, um, an idea that is, uh, you know, in political theory, we can think comes from like uh, uh, Deleuze, right? Which is that they wanna be like um, 
a network, right? Uh, they want to be like ginger in the ground. You can cut it off anywhere and then plant it anywhere and it will sprout back up. Um, and there are movement philosophers who, who go, who talk about this in different ways. Like for example, Adrian Marie Brown talks about emergent strategy, right? And it's all about this is that you want to create a movement in which, and this has deep roots in black feminist thought, by the way, like this is Ella Baker also, right? Like from the American civil rights movement. Um, you want to create a movement that can be, be propped down anywhere and do the work that needs to be done. Um, and so that's what I would say. This one, this movement is very highly adaptive and is very attentive to the history of movements. So it's no mistake that they have this form, right? Um, um, they're studied, right? Uh, and are very interested in how you have the coordinating capacity of a large organization without being stultified, right? Um, the way that a large organization can be become. I think all of that is exactly right. And I, I just wanted to point out one other quick detail, which is um, in, in research that I've done with uh, Jeremy Pressman and Kenesha Bond and, um, and Jenna Arnold, uh, one of the, the, the mass mobilization that was the largest in terms of locations uh, before this past summer um, was in March of 2018, uh, a month after the shooting at Parkland uh, High School in Florida. Um, when over 4,400 schools experienced walkouts over the lack of gun control. Um, 4,400 separate locations around the United States. That is by far the most <laughs> like uh, large scale simultaneous uh, single day demonstration in terms of numerical locations. There were 12 home schools in the database of people who walked out on their parents. There were 150 <laughs> kindergartens. There were uh, elementary schools and there were middle schools, high schools, and colleges and universities that participated in this. What does that mean? That means that uh, two years ago, youth uh, led and organized an uprising um, and uh, demanded that uh, adults begin to implement major uh, change around gun control. Who were the youth? They were the most diverse uh, <laughs> cohort of youth that this country has ever seen. Uh, many of the, the organizing was done by black and brown youth and indigenous youth uh, in collaboration with one another. Um, and what we saw this summer, at least in the state of Pennsylvania, is that um, school districts in which there had been a youth led kind of March for Our Lives uprising in 2018 were much more likely to have also organized uh, a movement for Black Lives or Black Lives Matter associated racial justice protests this past summer. So um, what did they do in between? They learned how to organize. That's right. So, you know, I think that this is like really powerful in showing the, the, the trajectory of learning and innovation and communication and engagement and, and youth uh, groups now who are really um, uh, on the leading edge of, of these organizing and mobilization efforts. Absolutely. And I should say there, there's direct collaboration between um, youth groups, right, and Movement for Black Lives, which is also a lot of youth, right, like so Dream Defenders, um, you know, March for Our Lives, Sunrise Movement, a lot of, there's a lot of overlap right there, so a lot of knowledge is shared um, between all of these movements. Yes, and, and similarly, the overlap is there too with the women's movement and the youth and the movement women's as march. well with yeah. March On and um, with the Future Coalition. Mm -hmm.